Hello, this is a tutorial on designing a laser resonator with a passive Q switch like Chromium Yuck using the software ASLD. Let us assume that we have designed a laser resonator here with a pumping power of 10 watts and let us see that we have observed that we have a crystal with several sections. Then we can insert a passive Q switch and now we have to decide what kind of uh, passive usage we have. We might have a chromium yak as passive usage and it might be a composite crystal. This option for choosing a composite, composite uh, crystal pops up since we have a crystal with several sections. And then we can choose choose these options and later we can decide in which section we actually have uh, this uh, chromium yak. However, in this case we assume that we have two different crystals and therefore we have to um, decide where the second uh, crystal is located. Um, yeah, let us change uh, the parameters of this passive Q switch. Here you see the default values for chromium yuck, but be careful. What we have found out by literature and by talking to several manufacturers of chromium yuck that these parameters are actually not the same for every chromium yuck even when they are cross sections. Depending on the way how they are manufactured you might get here some different values. What you have to change is uh, the total density of the central absorber and its length and these values are used to calculate the start transmission and you can also uh, adjust, for example, the total density when you know the length uh, to get the right uh, start transmission of your satellite absorber. Here in our case we take the default values. We additionally have a look to the parameters. Um, here you, when you click to Gauss mode calculation you can see that you get a second um, a way how you can um, discretize the saddle absorber. We, you can see that in this case we have five grid points um, for the grid in Z direction and 30 in XY direction for discretizing uh, the saddle absorber. Second, we should have a look uh, to the dynamic uh, mode analysis. Um, check that you are choosing here accurate printing during a pulse uh, that has a several advantage for seeing in detail how the pulse uh, looks like. And in the simulation parameters you should ch check adaptive uh, time stepping. Uh, additionally you should choose a simulation with Q switch. You can also switch that on um, uh, here. That's a simulation with a Q switch. Um, yeah, and now let us uh, do uh, simulation. Yeah, now after a short simulation time you see we actually have no pulse and no pulse energy. Why did that happen? Th to understand what's going on we go to the output and we see here the output power is actually nothing. Why did that happen? Uh, we also see that population version increased but it actually was not strong enough uh, such that really we can see a pulse. Therefore we again go to parameter and increase our simulation time. It is currently a relatively small value. Uh, maybe we choose it to uh, 0.02 seconds and do a simulation again. Now we are finished with the simulation and we can see that we get uh, pulses in a, with a pulse energy in a certain range and a certain repetition rate and we get an average pulse width of uh, 24 uh, nanoseconds. Uh, we can see in detail how the uh, output power looks like and we can see we see get here several pulses. You can also zoom in and see in more detail uh, how uh, the pulses look like, how the pulse shape is. Um, yeah, and you see you we get very nice uh, pulses. You can also see how the population inversion changes and you see the gain really had to be large enough 
in order to obtain uh, that uh, really a, p a pulsing. What in this current simulation we did not see was um, yeah, how the settle observer behaved. To see that, we have to go to dynamic mode analysis again, and we have to go to integrated values of settle observer density. We have to switch that on to every time step. And we also, if we would like to, could have a look how um, the adapti adaptive time stepping works and do a simulation run again. Now, after a short simulation time, we can have a look uh, what we now get. We get the same output power. Uh, we get the same uh, population version, and now pops up here another file integrated Certal Absorber, and you see exactly when we get pulses. Um, yeah, as the, sat the saturation of the Certal Absorber um, uh, drops down. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for listening to this tutorial.